Hello everyone, hope you all are doing good. I am Anjana from LearnoHub, the free learning platform where you can study math, science and SST absolutely free at LearnoHub.com. In today's class, we are going to discuss ICC class 9 physics chapter 4, pressure in fluids and atmospheric pressure. We will be discussing Pascal's law and applications of Pascal's law. Also, we will be solving questions related to this from exercise 4a. Are you ready for the session? Let's begin. So, we have studied about what thrust is and what pressure is. We have also discussed about fluids and the pressure in fluids. So, here you can see a JCB. How does the JCB work? You need to understand the physics behind the working of JCB. You can see a simple example. Daily you use a toothpaste, right? How does paste come out of a toothpaste? You will be pressing somewhere, okay? So here I am having a cream. Let it be a cream or an ointment, okay? If I press at this point, this point, this point or this point, any point on this tube, you can see the liquid or the fluid will come out. Yes. So, how is this happening? I am applying a pressure. So, applying a pressure at any point will take the fluid inside this out. Yes. So, how is it happening actually? I am applying a force. I am applying a force on area which means there is a pressure. Okay. Due to this pressure, the liquid or the fluid inside is coming out. This is the same case with the toothpaste. Okay. Whether you press at its one end, so this is how a toothpaste, a tube is, okay. Whether you press here, you press here, you press here, you press here. Four points I have marked. Anywhere by pressing, you can bring the toothpaste out, which means pressure is distributed, okay. So when you apply a pressure at this point, what happens? Equal pressure is applied at this point. Equal pressure is applied at this point. The toothpaste which is at this end will be coming out. Yes, which means the pressure is being transmitted. So here in today's class we will be discussing about the transmission of pressure in liquid. And there is a law behind this. We will discuss in detail about this law. Okay, if you understand you will also understand how the JCB works. Okay, so let's go to that law. The law behind this is called Pascal's law. So, you remember this picture? So, here in a container water is taken or in a bottle you can take water with three holes. What happens? The liquid will be coming out. Also, we have studied pressure depends on the depth from the free surface, density of the liquid and acceleration due to gravity. Yes. So, here you can see at different depths the pressure will be different. All this we have discussed. Okay. Here this is the depth. This is the depth here and here this is the depth, okay. When depth increases, what happens? Pressure also increases. So, here if you are considering two points, this is point X and this is point Y, okay. There is a difference in depth which we can call delta H, which means there will be a difference in pressure. Here you can see that there is no change in density nor the acceleration due to gravity. So, pressure completely depends now on the depth okay so there is a difference in depth yes so due to this difference of depth what is happening the transmission of pressure is happening okay now take the same we have taken a tube okay this is a cream we have taken the tube here if i am applying pressure at different points just imagine so this is how a tube is okay and the fluid will be coming out of it. So, here considering four points. One, two, three and four. Okay. When I increase the pressure at one, what happens? The pressure at two will increase. The pressure at point three will increase. Pressure at point four will increase. And the amount or the quantity of cream that comes out will increase. Yes. If I am applying pressure at point 2, same thing will happen. The pressure at 3 will increase, pressure at 4 will increase, the pressure at 1 will also increase. In all directions, the pressure will be distributed. Okay. Now, if I am increasing the pressure at 3, 
same thing pressure at 2 pressure at 1 pressure at 4 and the amount of cream that comes out will also increase okay what do you understand from this there is a difference in pressure created so when you consider these four points if i'm applying pressure only at this point there is also a pressure difference in this point the pressure is changing okay so this change in pressure will always be maintained if the change in depth is increased the change in pressure will also increase so by increasing pressure we can understand that the amount of the fluid that comes out will also increase. Okay, now we can state Pascal's law. Pascal's law states that the pressure exerted anywhere in a confined liquid is transmitted equally. If you are applying pressure at 1, it is equally transmitted to 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, etc. And the amount of fluid that comes out depends on this pressure and undiminished in all direction throughout the liquid. As I said, if the pressure at point 3 is increased, in all direction, the pressure will increase. At all points in this confined area, the pressure will increase. Okay, so this is what Pascal's law is. Okay, now this Pascal's law was given by scientist Blaise Pascal. Demonstration of Pascal's law will understand an experiment here a flask is taken in this flask there are different tubes attached okay the bottom at the sides there are different tubes attached okay and this is a airtight piston okay airtight piston is also inserted now you can see that the water in all the tubes are at the same level here this is the water level okay initially this is the water level now what happens if i press this piston what happens? For example, if you have a container with water, okay, you are inserting some solid, let's say a bowl, a box or something into this liquid. What happens? The water level is going to rise. The box will be at the bottom and the water level is going to rise. Same thing will be happening here because the piston when pressed, what happens? It occupies some area. Okay, it occupies some volume, which means the water will also, the water level is going to increase. Is it like the water level in this tube will be highest, this will be the lowest, in this it is going to decrease. Will that happen? No, right? So here while pressing the piston, let's say the piston has reached this point. What happens? The water from all these is going to jump out. Okay, it's going to jump out of the tube. Now you will be able to see that the water will rise to the same level. Okay. When the piston is inserted, what happens? The water will rise to the same level. What does it mean? Here you will understand that the pressure is equally distributed. Okay. It is not like the tube at the bottom will have the maximum pressure and the water will increase to the maximum height in this tube. The pressure is equally distributed. Therefore, the rise in water level will be the same in all the cases. Okay. So, this is an experiment to demonstrate Pascal's law. What is the statement of Pascal's law? The pressure is applied at a point will be equally distributed. The transmission is pressure is equal. So here you can see the transmission of pressure is equal. Here we are applying a pressure. Okay. To press the piston we are applying a pressure. The pressure is being applied. When the pressure is applied this pressure is transmitted to all the tubes. Okay. The water through moving through all the tubes will be experiencing the same pressure. Okay? Due to this transmission of pressure, the water level increase will be the same in all the cases. Okay, So this is an experiment to understand Pascal's law. Application of Pascal's law. The important application of Pascal's law is in case of hydraulic machine which we will be discussing in detail. Now you have to remember only a small thing. A small force that is acting on a small area will be able to produce a large force on a large area. Now take this here you have two containers. Let's call it P and Q. They are connected through a tube R. 
okay inside we have a hydraulic fluid let's say water or any other fluids so here you are able to see that this region is having a smaller diameter or area compared to this region yes which means the area a1 of region p is less than the area a2 of region q okay greater area and less area okay, here you can see that two pistons are attached to this okay these are airtight pistons attached now what happens is when you apply a force let's say f1 force is applied on area a1 what is the pressure then we will be having pressure p1 will be equal to what is pressure pressure is force by area this is a perpendicular force okay force by area here f1 divided by a1 okay now when this pressure is applied what happens this pressure according to pascal's law will be equally transmitted in all direction okay so the pressure is applied on this hydraulic fluid this pressure gets transmitted yes at all points you will be having the same pressure okay from here to here at all points the same pressure will be there now come to the second region that is q here the area is a2 what will be the pressure experienced pressure experienced will be taken as p2 according to pascal's law now we know that pressure p1 will be equal to pressure p2 because pressure will be the same when you apply a pressure the same pressure will be transmitted throughout the liquid okay so p1 will be equal to p2 clear now due to this pressure here there is an area what happens is this piston should rise okay here you are applying a force on piston for example even if you keep a weight over here what happens a pressure there is a force there is a pressure okay so due to this the pressure gets transmitted now due to this pressure there is a force which will lift the piston to higher okay so what is this force how to find force we have pressure is equal to force by area which means force here the force is f2 f2 will be equal to p2 into area a2 okay due to this pressure the piston will rise okay the force will be p2 into a2 now we know that p2 is equal to p1 okay from this we are able to write p2 will be equal to f2 divided by a2 which means since p1 is equal to p2 we will be having p1 is f1 by a1 and p2 is f2 by a2 p1 is equal to p2 therefore f1 by a1 is equal to f2 divided by a2 okay what does it mean so here we know that area a1 is less than a2 or a2 greater than a1 okay this can be written as f1 by f2 is equal to a1 by a2 okay now when area increases what happens to force force should also increase because here comparing a1 and a2 we know that a2 is greater which means here also in the denominator when you take the ratio f2 should be greater only then they can be equal therefore the force f2 will be greater than force f1 now we can find it okay we don't know what the force f2 is how to find f2 now we are having f1 by f2 is equal to a1 by a2 then f2 will be equal to f1 a2 divided by a1 this is how you can find the force f2 okay just remember this is an application of pascal's law applying pascal's law that is small force on a small area will be able to produce a large force on a large area
okay this is how a jcb operates okay just giving a small force on a small area is able to produce a large force which will be helping in the working of a jcb examples of hydraulic machines we are going to discuss about hydraulic press the hydraulic press works on the principle of pascal's law so here you can see this is how a hydraulic press looks like the so important parts you have a cylinder p then you have a cylinder q okay here you have valve 1 this is valve 2 water supply tank there is a connecting pipe which we call as r you have a release valve which will be connected to the reservoir then you have pistons piston a and piston b a fixed support here you can place a bale of cotton to compress it okay so compression how does it happen the working of hydraulic press we are going to discuss okay now this piston a we can call which is close to the handle and the cylinder it is attached cylinder p it is attached it can be called the pump plunger okay and the piston which comes here okay is called press plunger okay now what is the principle principle behind this this is the same pascal's law small pressure on a small area is going to produce a large force on a large area okay so applying a small force on a small area you will be able to produce a large force on a large area which is the working principle behind this now let us say about the work so here you can see a handle okay when this handle is lifted up what happens is the pressure inside the cylinder p will be less than that in the water supply tank due to the atmospheric pressure what happens is the water is going to rise or the fluid is going to rise okay it will reach here so th here the water supply tank contains the water from the reservoir now what happens is you are going to lower the handle when you lower the handle here we have a lever setup when you lower the handle what happens is the pump plunger that is a piston a is going to move downward a force is applied let this force be f1 f1 force is acting on the fluid in cylinder p now what happens so here what happens this pressure created will open the valve one okay and through the connecting pipe the pressure is getting transmitted so according to pascal's law there is a transmission of pressure when you apply a pressure at one point there is transmission of pressure okay it reaches valve 2 then what happens the valve 2 is going to open okay so this pressure gets into the cylinder b clear now what happens to the piston which is attached here that is the press bungler what happens due to this pressure which is acting on an area due to the force that is created f2 this piston is going to rise okay this piston is going to rise okay so here we'll understand the area a1 is less than the area a2 according to pascal's law we know pressure p1 will be equal to pressure p2 okay therefore f1 force will be less than f2 which means here due to a greater area a greater force will be created okay this force will help in the compression that is the bale of cotton will get compressed between the fixed support and the press plunger okay after the working now what happens is when the piston is released what happens the valve will open okay now the due through this releasing valve the water will go to the water supply tank okay so this is the working of a hydraulic press now what are the uses of hydraulic press first one for pressing cotton bales and goods like quilts books etc so whatever is to be pressed will be kept over here like the cotton bale was kept whatever is to be pressed will be kept over here the same working what happens applying a force pressure is created on this area this gets transmitted according to pascal's law the pressure will be same and then what happens here it will rise the piston will rise pressing will happen 
between the fixed substrate and the piston. Okay, this is the working. Next is for extracting the juice from sugar cane or sugar beet. Okay. Next for squeezing oil out of linseed and cotton seeds. So all these seeds will be kept over here. Okay. And you can extract the oil from it. Next for engraving monograms on goods. So these are the four applications of hydraulic press. Second mention that we are going to discuss is hydraulic jack. A hydraulic jack is used for lifting heavy vehicles such as cars, trucks, etc. in service stations for their repairing. It works on the Pascal's principle. So here this is how a hydraulic jacks looks like okay now check this figure i'll be discussing it here you have a cylinder p similar to the one we have had in the hydraulic press cylinder q okay piston a piston b then you have a valve so here we have a valve v you have a handle then you have a lever okay now when the handle is lowered so we now will be discussing the working so what is the principle? Small force applied on small area will create a large force on a large area. Same principle. So here we are lowering the handle. When you lower the handle, what happens? The piston A will go down. Okay. When the piston A goes down, what happens? There is a force created because of this force on this area. Let's say force F1 acting on area A1 pressure P1 is created. This pressure P1 gets transmitted through this liquid. Okay. It enters a connecting tube R. Okay. So this connecting tube R, it reaches a valve V. Now what happened? Due to the pressure, the valve opens. Okay. You can see the valve opens here. When the valve opens, the liquid is going to flow to the cylinder. Q. Once it reaches here, what happens? Due to the pressure on the area, there is a force. The force will lift the car up. Okay. When this car, so you are actually handling, you are applying your force here. Okay. On the handle, you are applying the force to lower it. Okay. So when this car, it reaches the desired height, what can be done is no more you are going to lower the handle you will hold it there okay when you hold it there what happens is the pressure will become same which means the valve will get closed okay no more the water can enter okay so here the pressure is anyways the same so because the pressure in p and q becomes equal and the valve gets closed what happens for the liquid won't be entering okay the car will reach the desired height. Clear? It will reach the desired height. Okay. So this is the working of a hydraulic jack. Here there is pressure P1 equal to P2. Force F1 divided by A1 will be equal to F2 divided by A2. The force that is acting on the car F2 will be equal to F1 into A2 divided by A1. If you know these two areas and the force that you are applying, you can find the force with which the car is lifted. Okay. Next, the last example for hydraulic machines is hydraulic brakes. A hydraulic brake such used in cars, etc. are based on Pascal's principles. So this is the setup. Here you will be having a pipeline R. Then you have a master cylinder P. Then you have a piston A which is attached to a foot pedal. Okay. The other end of the pipeline R, you are having a wheel cylinder Q. Then you have two pistons, piston B1 and piston B2 for different wheels. Here you can see only one wheel. For different wheels, there will be separate wheel cylinders. Then you have the brake shoes, a spring and the rim of the wheel. Okay. So this is a setup. Here, Pascal's law is applied. According to Pascal's law, there is a transmission of pressure. Okay. Therefore, pressure P1 will be equal to P2. Now, you are applying a force on the foot pedal, which is F1, which is a small force. A small force, which is acting on a small area A1. Then what happens when you apply this force? The liquid. Here, there will be oil in the pipeline R which is the liquid, okay. Piston A moves forward due to the force. Then what happens? 
the liquid in the master cylinder P, which is small area of procession of the master cylinder P is small compared to the area of procession of the wheel cylinder Q. Okay, here the liquid starts to flow and it will reach the wheel cylinder Q. When it reaches the wheel cylinder Q, you can see two pistons B1 and B2. Okay, now force is being applied on pistons B1 and B2. Here the area is larger. When area increases, force increases. Due to this force, what happens? It moves outward. In this way, the force acts. Okay, it moves outward. When it moves outward, what happens to the brake shoe? The brake shoe will move against the rim of the wheel. And here, due to this, what happens is the motion of the vehicle gets retarded. Okay, its movement gets retarded. When you release, then when you release the foot pedal, what happens? When you release the foot pedal, the pressure is decreasing. Okay, that is the spring comes back to its original position. The pistons B1 and B2 comes back to its original position. Fluid from the cylinder Q, that is wheel cylinder Q will flow back to the master cylinder P and the motion of the vehicle will again become smooth. Okay. So, this is the working of a hydraulic brake. So, understood what happens when brakes are applied? We are applying a small force. It is creating a heavy force to stop the vehicle. Let us take an example. In a hydraulic machine, the two pistons are of area of cross section in the ratio 1 is to 10. What force is needed on the narrow piston to overcome a force of 100 Newton on the wider piston? So, we know that pressure is equal to pressure is equal to force divided by area. Okay. From this we know pressure is directly proportional to force and pressure is inversely proportional to area. We will be having force is equal to pressure into area. Okay. Now we know that pressure is a constant. Okay. Pressure will be equally transmitted. P1 will be equal to P2 which means the force is dependent on area. When area increases what happens to force? Force also increases. So force is directly proportional to area. Okay. So here we are given that in a hydraulic machine the two pistons are of area of cross section in the ratio 1 is to 10 which means when you have a narrow piston and a wider piston, which one is having smaller area? Smaller area is for the narrow piston, which means the force will also be small for the smaller piston. So here we are taking the area of narrow piston as A1 and the area of wider piston as A2. Okay. So, we are given A1 is to A2 is equal to 1 is to 10 or A1 by A2 is equal to 1 divided by 10. What else is given? What force is needed on the narrow piston? Force on narrow piston will be F1 which we need to find to overcome a force of 100 Newton on the wider piston. F2 is equal to 100 Newton. Okay. We know Pressure P1 on the narrow piston will be equal to F1 divided by A1. Pressure P2 on wider piston will be F2 divided by A2. We have according to Pascal's law P1 is equal to P2. Therefore, F1 by A1 is equal to F2 divided by A2. Okay, we need to find what F1 is. F1 will be equal to A1 by A2 into F2. Okay, put the values. What is A1 by A2? A1 by A2 is 1 by 10 into what is F2? F2 is given which is 100 Newton. So, you will be getting F1 is equal to cancelling 10 Newtons. Okay, so here what is the ratio of areas? 1 is to 10. Now, what is the ratio of forces? F1 is to F2 will also be equal to 1 is to 10. That 
that is 10 divided by 100 which is 1 by 10. Okay. Determine the force needed on the narrow piston to overcome a force of 100 Newton on the wider piston which is equal to 10 Newtons. Example 2. The area of cross section of a press punker of a hydraulic press is 4 meter square. It is required to overcome a resistive load of 400 kilogram force on it. Calculate the force required on the pump plunger if the area of cross section of the pump plunger is 0.01 meter square. We have to find the force. Okay. Let's say the area of cross section of press plunger. Area of cross section of press plunger is equal to 4 meter square. We will take this as A2. Okay. It is required to overcome a resistive load of 400 kilogram force on it. Which means the force on it F2 is equal to 400 kilogram force. Calculate the force required on the pump plunger if the area of cross section. Area of cross section of pump plunger is equal to 0 0.01 meter square. We have to find the force on force required on the pump plunger which is F1. How to find F1? We have pressure P1 equal to P2 which means F1 by A1 will be equal to F2 by A2. Okay. So, here we have to find F1. F1 will be equal to F2 into A1 by A2. Put the values. What is F2? F2 is 400 kilogram force. A1. A1 is equal to, this is A1, that is the area of cross section of pump plunger. 0 0.01 meter square divided by, here we have 4 meter square. 4 which is equal to cancelling we get 100 100 kilogram force into 0 0.01 which is equal to you will be getting 1 kilogram force okay so the force required on the pump plunger is equal to 1 kilogram force so this 1 kilogram force on area of 0 0.01 meter square will be able to lift 400 kilogram force okay, on 4 meter square area. Clear? Now let us discuss questions related to Pascal's law from exercise 4a. Question 9 of exercise 4a. In a hydraulic machine, a force of 2 Newton is applied on the piston of area of cross section 10 centimeter square. What force is obtained on its piston of area of cross section 100 centimeter square? Okay. In this hydraulic mission, a force of 2 Newton is applied. Let us take the applied force as F1. F1 is equal to 2 Newton. On a piston of cross sectional area, A1 is equal to 10 centimeter square. What force is required on its piston of area of cross section 100 centimeter square? We have to find F2 where the area of cross section is equal to 100 centimeter square. According to Pascal's law, the pressure will be equally transmitted. P1 will be equal to P2. Small force on a small area will produce a large force on a large area. Okay. So, F1 divided by F2 is equal to A1 divided by A2. Here, we have to find what F2 is. F2 will be equal to F1 into A2 divided by A1. Okay. Then, F2 is equal to, put the values, F1. F1 is 2 Newton into Area of cross section A2 is equal to 100 centimeter square divided by A1 is 10 centimeter square. 10 centimeter square. Units, zeros can be removed, then you have 20 Newton. F2 is equal to 20 Newton. What is F2? Force 
on its piston of area of cross section 100 centimeter square is equal to 20 newton okay question number 12 of exercise 4a a force of 50 kilogram force is applied to the smaller piston of a hydraulic machine neglecting friction find the force exerted on the large piston if the diameters of the pistons are 5 cm and 25 cm respectively here the diameters are given using diameter we know how to find the area okay now a force of 50 kilogram force is applied to the smaller piston well let us take this force as f1 f1 is equal to 50 kilogram force piston of a hydraulic machine neglecting friction find the force exerted on the larger piston if the diameter of pistons are 5 cm 5 cm will be of the smaller piston okay so area a1 will be equal to pi r1 square where r1 is the radius we know the relation between radius and diameter yes what is the relation we have diameter is equal to 2 times radius therefore radius will be diameter divided by 2 so this becomes equal to pi d1 by 2 whole square okay now this is pi d1 square d1 is 5 5 centimeter divided by 2 whole square. Okay. Next, we have to find F2. A2 is equal to pi 25 centimeter by 2 whole square. Okay. How to find F2 according to Pascal's law? You will be having F1 by F2 is equal to A1 by A2. Which means F2 will be equal to F1 into A2 divided by A1. Okay. Put the values F1. F1 is 50 kilogram force. Next A2. A2 is equal to pi 25 square centimeter square divided by 2 square is 4 okay divided by then you are having a1 a1 is equal to pi 5 square centimeter square divided by 2 square which is 4 okay now taking the reciprocal of this part and multiplying we get 50 kilogram force into pi 25 square centimeter square divided by 4 into 4 divided by pi 5 square centimeter square centimeter square centimeter square gets removed 4 4 gets removed pi pi gets removed then 50 kilogram force will into 25 into 25 is 25 square divided by 5 into 5. Okay. Cancelling. 5 into 5 is 25. 25 into 5 is 125. Then a 0. So, 1250 kilogram force is the force exerted on the large piston. Question number 14 of exercise 4a. What force is applied on a piston of area of cross section 2 cm square to obtain a force 150 Newton on the piston of area of cross section 12 cm square in a hydraulic machine? Okay. So, here we have to find the force applied on a piston of area of cross section 2 cm square. Let this force be F1. Okay, A1 is equal to 2 cm square. To obtain a force of 150 Newton on the piston of area of cross section 12 cm square. So, F2 is equal to 150 Newton area of cross section. A2 is equal to 12 cm square. Okay, according to Pascal's law, small force on a small area will produce a large force on a large area. So, here F1 by F2 equals a1 by a2 now we have to find 
what f1 is f1 will be equal to f2 into a1 by a2 put the values f1 is equal to 150 into a1 2 centimeter square divided by a2 12 centimeter square 6 which is 150 divided by 6 that is equal to 25 newtons so 25 newtons is the force that is applied on an area on the piston of area of cross section 2 centimeter square clear that's all for today. In today's class, we have discussed Pascal's law and its application. We have also discussed problems related to this. Hope you all enjoy the session. I'll be back in the next session. Until then, stay tuned to Learn Hub. Learn Hub free hai, par best hai. Thank you.